okay next is we'll come to the memory part memory so what do you mean by memory let us see now uh, this is not new to you guys okay so the we have studied a lot about memory okay so the, in with respect to the embedded system what do you mean by memory let us see now a memory is an important part of an embedded system the memory used in embedded system can be either program storage memory that is rom or data memory ram okay so these are the two main kinds of memories uh, which is used under the embedded system for the uh, reading of the data and the generating the data in a, a wider sequence and all the memory plays a very vital role okay it is an important part of an embedded system so some of the important program storage memories are uh, rom that is a uh, read only memory and data memory that is ram uh, in in the ram we have again uh, many types that is sram that is static memory dram that is dynamic memory and uh, nvram in case of uh, we have one more memory called as flash memory also then we have rom rom also we have many times that is uh, programmable read only memory p rom erasable programmable read only memory that is ep rom then we have electrically erasable programmable read only memory that is e prom okay so see here we have so with respect to the code memories we have uh, different types of memories also that also we are going to discuss here next is program storage memory so what do you mean by this program storage memory that is rom it stores the program instructions okay it retains its contents even after the power uh, power to it is turned off okay it is generally known as non volatile storage memory okay what do you mean what do you mean by this sentence it can it it retains its contents even after the power it is to it is turned off okay once if you uh, for example uh, while doing any program uh in the middle of the program some power cut happens or you lose the program so you can again fetch that program back okay by retaining its instructions without any change okay so that is called as program storage memory once you type the code you can store it and permanently it gets stored and you can fetch back again and continue the program it is non volatile in nature okay depending on the fabrication erasing and programming techniques they are also classified into again so, so this is the classification part okay first is masked rom okay m rom okay this is one time programmable memory it uses hardwired technology from the storing data uh, the primary advantage of m rom is low cost for high volume production they are least expensive type of solid state memory so different mechanisms are used for the masking process of the rom like uh, creation of enhancement or depletion mode transistor through channel implant by creating the memory cell either using a standard transistor or a high threshold transistor in the high threshold mode the supply voltage required to turn on the transistor is above the normal rom ic operating voltage this ensures that the transistor is always off and the memory cell stores always logic zero okay so why it is always logic zero because the uh, it ensures that the transistor is always off okay when the transistor is always off we, there is the, the high high voltage logic won't be applied the logic would be always zero the limitation with m rom based firmware storage is the inability to modify the device firmware against the firmware upgrades okay so this is one important limitation where in the masked rom uh, it is uh, not able to modify the device uh, software part when the when we have any software upgrades that is uh, we cannot be able to change because it has a specified instruction and uh, it has a certain limitations for a particular program and it cannot be uh, linked with any other upgrades available in the software okay since the m rom is permanent in bit storage it is not possible to alter the bit information so this was about m rom next we have p rom that is programmable read only memory okay unlike m rom it is not pre programmed by the manufacturer p rom it has a nichrom and polysilicon wires arranged in a matrix so what this nichrom and polysilicon wires does is these wires can be functionally viewed as fuses okay it is programmed by a p rom programmer which selectively burns the fuses according to the bit pattern to be shown these fuses which are not blown burned represents logic 1 whereas which are the fuses which are blown or burned represents the logic 0 okay the default state is logic 1 the otp is widely used for commercial production of embedded systems whose prototyped versions are proven and the code is finalized it is a low cost solution for commercial production otps cannot be reprogrammed 
okay so this was all about programmable read only memory okay you if you read this you would be able to understand it is very easy okay next we have erasable programmable read only memory okay same as pro uh, prom only but there is one extra feature available here that is erasable okay erasable means it it is not permanent okay once you do the execution and uh, you get the output and you think that we need some change in the output so what you could be doing is simply erase the part which you which is not necessary okay and that is erasable programmable read only memory where the program can can be fetched one more than more than one time okay and it is uh, possible erasable programmable read only memory gives the flexibility to reprogram the same chip as i have told you to reprogram okay eprom stores the bit information by charging the floating gate of an fet that is a field effect transistor bit information is stored by using the eprom programmer which helps high voltage to charge the floating gate the eprom contains a quartz crystal window for erasing the stored information if the window is exposed to uv rays for a fixed duration the entire memory would be erased even though the eprom chip is flexible in terms of reprogrammability it needs to be taken out of the circuit board and needs to be put in a uv eraser device for at least 20 to 30 minutes okay so this was about eprom next we have electrically erasable programmable read only memory that is eeprom the eeprom memory gives the flexibility to reprogram the same chip using electrical signals okay so again uh, the repro reprogramming part would be done but now the reprogramming part could be done using the electrical signals that is using some other uh, output such as hardware you could be uh, accessing the program you could be extending the program duration also okay the information contained in eeprom memory can be altered by using electrical signals at the register or the byte level they can be erased and reprogrammed within the circuit these chips include a chip erase mode okay and in this mode they can be erased in a few milliseconds it provides greater flex flexibility for the system design for system design in all these devices the highest number of flexibility and the very large flexibility is under eeprom okay the only limitation is their capacity is limited when compared to the standard rom a few kilobytes okay so this was about eeprom next we have flash memory flash memory is a variation of eeprom technology it combi it combines the reprogrammability of eeprom and the high capacity of standard roms uh, it is organized as sectors blocks or pages okay it is uh, given in an organized manner okay that is uh, uh, if you want a uh, part of flash memory to be executed it would be executed in the sequence with respect to the requirement flash memory stores the information in an array of floating gate mosfet transistors the erasing of memory can be done at sector level or page level without affecting the other sectors or pages each sector page should be erased before repro uh, reprogram so this was about flash memory next we have read write memory or random access memory okay so here this random access memory is a uh, yeah, very volatile in nature okay it is used usually used for controlling memory of any microprocessors controllers and all this uh, random access memory are used okay so ram is the data memory for all working memory of the controller or processor it is volatile which means that the, when the power is turned off all the contents are destroyed okay whereas in read only memory the uh, it is non volatile we could be you could be fetching back the memory but in case of random access memory it is volatile in nature meaning when the power is turned off all the contents we cannot fetch it back we should be starting from again okay so that's why this is one very important difference between ram and rom which you need to be knowing okay rom is non volatile and ram is volatile in nature it is a direct access memory meaning we can access the designed memory location directly without the need for traversing to the entire memory location to reach the desired memory position okay so here some are some of the rams uh, very important ones that is sram dram and nvram okay first is static ram okay sram the static ram stores the data in the form of voltage they are made up of flip flops okay static rams are made up of flip flops in typical implementation an sram cell 
is realized using six transistors uh, instead of transistors you could be using also six mosfets it is left to you where four of the transistors are used for building the latch okay uh, as a part of the memory cell and two are used for controlling the access okay static ram is the fastest form of uh, ram which is available in the market it is fast in operation due to its resistive networking and switching capabilities okay so here are the uh, symbols of transistors here where it is connected uh, so you could see here that there are six transistors in picture here one two three four five six with the necessary vcc and ground connections with respect to the bit lines provided okay so this is the cell implementation of sram you could please note it down next we have dynamic ram that is dram dynamic ram stores the data in form of charts they are made up of mos transistor gates the advantages of dram are uh, its high density and low cost compared to sram okay it has a high density and cost is very low which when compared to the static ram the disadvantage is that since the information is stored as charge it gets leaked off with time and prevent and to prevent this they need to be refreshed periodically okay so the leakage part is very very uh, it is a very uh, huge disadvantage in case of dynamic ram it is it, it, it does not remain uh, safe and secured inside it because it gets leaked off okay in order to prevent this we should be refreshing the contents provided uh, periodically okay we cannot skip any part the special circuits called dram controllers are used for refreshing operation okay the refresh operation is done periodically in milliseconds interval okay so this is the dram uh, cell implementation uh, you could note it down okay so this was about sram and dram so these are some of the important differences as i have told here they have uh, mentioned it in the uh, table here sram cell and dram cell okay so please uh, note this down very important one okay pause the video and refer this next one more very important part non volatile ram that is nv ram so we know that ram is volatile in nature but if you want the ram to be non volatile we have this special kind of uh, condition that is called as non volatile ram or nv ram the random access memory with battery backup it contains static ram based memory and a minute battery for, for providing the supply to the memory in the absence of the external power supply the memory and battery are packed together in a single package nvram is used for non volatile storage of results of operation for setting up of flags okay you know just it is just if you want to act if you want an ram to be acting as a rom so we use this nvram in nature okay yeah so this was all about uh, the complete uh, thing of this video we have started with the we have started with the load store operation and instruction pipelining and we have covered most of the concepts that is related to instruction pipelining pld's asics memory ram, uh, uh, ram memories rom memories everything we have discussed okay so that's all for this video guys so in the next video we are going to continue with some of the concepts which is related to the sensors and actuators okay we'll see that in the next video so that's all for this video guys thank you like share subscribe to our channel keep supporting us okay thank you guys